Solar Batteries 101, a beginner's guide to owning batteries, 2022 edition. This video, the final part of my three-part Battery 101 guide, gives food for thought on how owning a battery system can change your life and provides advice on monitoring and maintenance. If you're not yet at the stage where you own a battery, check out parts one and two of this guide linked in the description for information about the fundamentals of solar battery storage, as well as how to buy a battery for your home with confidence. I've broken down the most important things I think you should know when owning a battery into the following nine sections. One, your battery's been installed. Now what? Two, smart usage. Don't be caught out in a blackout. Three, battery throughput and how it affects your warranty. Four, the ultimate home battery test. How long will you last off the grid? Five, VPPs and time of use tariffs. How to save the most money possible. Six, battery maintenance. What do they need? Seven, making sure your battery is performing as expected over time. Eight, preparing for the worst. What to do if there's an issue with your battery. And finally, nine, end of life and beyond, disposal and recycling of batteries. Let's get to it. Section one, your battery's been installed, now what? What can you do as an owner, but also as a non-expert to check the installation? Consider the following. If cars can access where the battery is, like a garage, is it protected from bad drivers with a bollard or equivalent? The last thing you want to worry about when backing into your garage is accidentally damaging your shiny new battery. If your battery provides backup, do you understand which house circuits are backed up? Your battery will rarely back up your whole house. This is smart design. You don't want your battery to be drained too quickly by non-essential appliances in a blackout. Do you understand which appliances are on the backed up circuits and the power that they draw? In my own home, I have my lights, air conditioner and internet router backed up. Specific power points in my kitchen and living room are also on these circuits. The aircon uses the most electricity by far. So I'm always really careful with how I use it during a blackout. Are all isolators bottom entry? Avoid top entry, even if the isolators are indoors. Top entry introduces a weakness where water can get in, whether that's from outdoor rain or indoor condensation. Has your installer taken the time to show you how your home battery's monitoring app works? Being able to quickly tell how your battery system is going via a smartphone or a computer app is a critical part of monitoring. Your installer should have sat down with you and given you a demonstration of how the monitoring works. If they haven't, get them back to provide you with a tutorial. In rare instances, an off-peak electricity tariff may be lower than your feed-in tariff. If this is the case, you'll want to set your battery to charge off-peak every night. Are the current transformers, CTs, installed properly? Your monitoring app will show you some really funky data if they're not, like in this image here, where everything is backwards. Are overnight loads minimized? You want to avoid large loads draining your battery overnight, leaving you with little or no charge in the morning before your solar panels start generating power again when the sun rises. If you have an electric car charger, is it configured to not draw from your battery? You generally want to avoid charging an electric car from your battery. This is because solar electricity during the day and off-peak electricity at night are usually cheaper than the energy stored in the battery. Also, batteries wear out faster the more they are used. Did your installer provide all relevant documentation? Hopefully, you'll never have to check these but it's important to have a copy of your battery's warranty and owner's system care document. Here's what you should have. The Clean Energy Council CEC commissioning documents. A single line diagram or SLD 
which shows other electricians how the battery is wired. Blackout circuits that are selected. Product data sheet. Warranty information. System care information. Most installers provide you with these on the installation day, but some can take a week or so. Give them a tap on the shoulder if you haven't received all the necessary owner documents by then. For the single line diagram, my advice is to tape it to the inside of your switchboard or print a copy and keep it somewhere accessible. Any electrician working on your home in the future should be able to see it. Does your installer plan to come back for a final performance check? Some installers go the extra mile and do a post installation check within 30 days. Such checks make sure everything is running optimally and will pick up most issues. Section two, smart battery usage. Don't be caught out in a blackout. If you've watched part two of this guide, you'll know that batteries should only back up essential circuits. If your battery goes into backup mode and you've backed up your whole house, you may not even realize a blackout has occurred. And if you carry on as usual, a large load, oven, aircon, etc., could cause your battery to trip, leaving you in the dark. This is why it's important to familiarize yourself with your battery's monitoring app. Any decent manufacturer's app will alert you if your home battery goes into backup mode. Familiarize yourself with your battery's minimum discharge settings if it has them. This allows you to set a minimum amount of energy in reserve no matter what for blackout situations. Essentials like LED lights use very little energy, so even on 20% capacity, you could keep your house running for hours. Some batteries come with a storm mode feature. When activated in your monitoring app, it forces your battery system to charge from the grid in anticipation of a blackout. Certain batteries, such as the Tesla Powerwall, claim to check weather feeds online to activate storm mode automatically. But in my experience, this functionality is far from perfect, with some really quite severe storms not triggering storm mode on my battery, so don't rely on it. Section three, battery throughput and how it affects your warranty. Some battery warranties specify the amount of throughput they cover. Throughput is the total amount of energy your battery can store and discharge. In other words, the harder you work your battery, the faster it will fall out of warranty. Kind of like how some cars have a set kilometer traveled warranty. In this example, taken from a 13 kilowatt hour LG Chem Resu battery warranty document, you can see that they warrant a total energy throughput of 39 megawatt hours. That's 39,000 kilowatt hours. Some batteries, like the Tesla Powerwall, have a warranty that covers them for unlimited cycles unless they're being used as part of a virtual power plant or VPP. Ideally, normal usage will mean your battery will only cycle once per day except in rare circumstances. This will allow you to have maximum warranty coverage over the life of your system. Section four, the ultimate home battery test. How long will you last off grid? Batteries are expensive, so you want to make sure you're getting what you paid for when it comes to blackout protection. You don't need to wait for a tree to take out your power lines to see if your battery will perform as expected in a blackout. You can simulate blackout conditions yourself. Now, first I'll say, do not attempt this if you are at all uncomfortable with touching your switchboard. Your installer should be able to come over and show this to you. Okay, now it's important to do this during the daytime when your home battery system has ample charge. There's no point attempting this at 10 p.m. when it's flat. Go to your switchboard and turn off the main switch, sometimes called grid supply. Now your home is physically disconnected from the grid. Next, check whether the appliance that your installer promised would work are actually working. If you ask for an apocalypse proof backup, I call that level three backup, check your monitoring app to ensure your battery system is charging from your solar panels whilst disconnected from the grid. Here's an example of what a home operating with level three backup looks like. I took this from my own Tesla monitoring app. If everything is performing as the installer promised, awesome. You can turn the main switch back on and feel reassured the money you spent was worth it. If you feel like a challenge, keep the switch off and go about your day as usual. See how long your home battery can support your everyday lifestyle. Once the battery runs out of charge, use your monitoring app to conduct a post-mortem. What drew the most power and drained the battery the most? Now you'll know how to be careful with your appliances in the event of a real blackout. Section five, VPPs, virtual power plants, and time of use tariffs. How to save the most money possible. Recently, time of use electricity tariffs 
have become more popular with energy retailers. They charge you varying prices for electricity depending on the time of day it's used, whereas a flat electricity tariff is one price for electricity no matter what. Here's an example of what a time of use tariff in Tasmania looks like. Battery owning households come out ahead if they're on a time of use tariff. This is because you use your stored energy to avoid those peak pricing periods. As an example, using the following assumptions of a home in Sydney with high evening electricity consumption and a Tesla Powerwall 2. Now, compare the difference in annual savings between a time of use plan and a flat tariff. Even the lamest time of use tariff will come out ahead of a flat tariff for a solar battery household. The exception is households with unusual energy consumption patterns. Now, what about virtual power plants or VPPs? Well, some virtual power plants also offer further savings for batteries. They'll pay you a higher feed in tariff for electricity discharge to the grid when the VPP needs it. Some will also profit share when grid electricity prices spike. But be aware that participating in a VPP usually means you can't be on a time of use tariff. If you're keen to join a VPP, make sure you balance the projected savings from joining one against the losses from going onto a flat tariff. Do your own sums and never take the VPP operator's word for it. I mean, when was the last time you thought you could trust an electricity retailer? Section six, battery maintenance. What do they need? The vast majority of batteries installed these days are lithium ion technology. These have the advantage of being set and forget and they are very low maintenance. While they will need a maintenance check every five years or so, there isn't anything you as a homeowner need to do to keep them running. Get familiar with your battery's monitoring app and check it once a week. This will let you quickly spot any issues. There are a couple of minor things to keep in mind as you live with your battery system. Some batteries need a constant internet connection to stay in warranty. Be wary of changing your Wi-Fi password. Your app should tell you if the internet connection goes down, yet another reason you should get familiar with it. Keep the battery area clean, especially if it's outside. You do not want leaves and other debris to block the ventilation ports. If you have to switch the battery off, be careful. Some solar batteries will become bricked if they're without power for too long, meaning they'll no longer be able to operate. Your installer should have placed an ES sticker on your switchboard, but if an electrician is doing work on your property, make sure you tell them that you have a battery system just to be sure they realize. Circuits will still be live even if they turn off your electricity at the switchboard. Show them the single line diagram mentioned previously in section one. Section seven, making sure your battery is performing as expected over time. As I mentioned in part two of this guide, all lithium batteries degrade in performance over time. Most manufacturers warrant a linear degradation. Keep a close eye on your battery through its monitoring app. Call your installer if, for example, you were getting 90% capacity in year three, but 80% in year four. That is too big a drop in capacity. Make sure you check your solar system performance and battery performance annually, comparing it to previous years. If something looks off, like a significant drop in performance year over year, go back to your installer. Please don't leave it for months until your system breaks down completely. Listen to the early warning signs. Remember, batteries are a new technology and none have reached their full warranty length yet. This is why it's important for owners to monitor how they perform in the real world. Section eight, preparing for the worst. What to do if there's an issue with your battery? Hopefully, if anything goes wrong, the worst issues you'll have to deal with will involve error codes and the battery not working. In this case, all you need to do is call your installer and have them come out, diagnose and fix the problem. But in a rare worst case scenario, lithium batteries can catch fire. Few manufacturers, except unsurprisingly Tesla, provide formal documentation on what to do if this worst case scenario happens. Lithium ion battery fires are not like your standard house fire. They burn intensely, emit toxic fumes and ordinary fire extinguishers are ineffective against them. So in the event of a battery fire, do not try to put it out yourself. Evacuate anyone in your home and call triple zero immediately. Section nine, end of life and beyond, disposal and recycling of batteries. At the time of filming, there are no Australia-wide battery recycling schemes available. But the good news is in the future, there will be recyclers happy to take solar batteries off your hands. This is because they contain valuable materials. In the meantime, some are easier to recycle than others. Tesla, for example, claims the total amount of non-recyclable material from a power wall can fit in the palm of your hand. 
Some manufacturers are better than others at planning for future recycling and safe disposal. The main question to ask someone trying to sell you a battery is, what is the manufacturer's approach to end of battery life? How recyclable is it? And that's a wrap on my Battery 101 guide. I really hope you found it useful. If you've managed to watch this whole guide but don't yet have a solar system or a battery, my website can help you get quotes from high quality trusted installers quickly and easily. Just visit solarquotes.com.au, pop your postcode into the top right box, hit the button, fill in the form, and I'll take it from there. Thanks for watching.